Welcome to the 131st episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined tonight by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz and a special guest. We have Shehalis man Gabe Botton joining the podcast. First time on a pod, Gabe? Yeah. Feeling good about yourself? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> We're also joined in spirit tonight by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. And before we get to our usual list of uh, you know news items and whatnot, Gabe, do you want to do you want to talk about yourself for a little bit? Tell us tell us your innermost feelings. I'm just kidding. I was that. promised like 30 minutes of stand up from Gabe on the podcast. As oh no, the promo I, there's a miscommunication there. The the stand up is actually this Friday at the Shahela nice Theater. Oh, that wasn't bad. Yeah, what Big time is that? Show. Doors are at 7:30 and the show starts at 8:30. Uh, what if I wanted tickets? Where would I go? You would go to the internet website www.hubcomedy.com. <laughs> that's that's online. You're saying on the internet? Yes. What if somebody just approaches you in downtown? Because you're you're frequently in downtown. I'm a Shailas. downtown guy. Yeah, you are a downtown guy. <laughs> if they just came up to you and were like, "Hey, man, you can I get some, some tickets? tickets?" I would say yes. Get on the internet and go to <laughs> www.hubcomedy.com. And who who are the comedians this Friday? Uh, this Friday, the headliner is Kabir Singh. He was on uh, America's Got Talent. Does he have talent? He he did. He he got passed <laughs> on a few times, and then uh, uh, towards the end, uh, I think Simon gave him the big X, and I think he told the whole crowd to boo that man, and they did, and oh, felt pretty rough. good about that. But no, he's uh, he's been up here a couple times. He's he's great, and um, two other openers uh, from the Seattle area okay. start the show, and yeah. It's a good time. All the right. venue's awesome. I don't know if you've been to uh, the McFiler's Theater. I think the last time I was there, they still had cartoons on the ceiling. Gone. Gone? Yeah. How long have you been doing the comedy thing? Because it's been a long time. It's been about 10 years now. 10 years? Yeah. So the latest is the McFiler's Theater. Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? So when I first started, it was at the Fox Theater. And then, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was really doing or wasn't really in the networks uh, of the comedians. <clears throat> but then uh, working with different festivals and getting to network uh, through those a little bit more. Got to, you know. So now you're friends with all the biggest. No, not, not John, quite. John but a lot of those people back there in the last 10 years now have, like, grown tremendously to where now it'd be like, hey, you should come up and do my uh, theater show. Yeah. But anyways, when the Fox shut down to, re- you know, renovate or whatever, then we've had to move around to different spots. We still have shows at the Juice Box from time to time. But now that mm-hmm. the Chehalis Theater is finally back open, that's – kind of going to be the home for hub comedy. And what do you think of McFiler's Theater? I think it's amazing. What do you, what do you think he's going to say? It's uh, trash? Yeah, maybe. You never know. <laughs> no, it's, Gabe's a wild card. So, uh, like, I, I was doing shows there for, uh, you know, a past the past couple owners, you know, like, and they were just, it, you know, the cartoons are still on the ceiling, and mm-hmm. a lot of remodeling needed to take place and didn't. Yeah. And it's, they put a lot of work in there. It's nice. They got the... High end dinners now there on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. It's is that like a weekly thing? It's fancy. Yeah, I don't know. We went there a couple weeks ago, and it's good. What would you have? Uh, I got the scallops. It's scallops. It's scallops. Damn. What's it like working with uh, Tim Filer, Lewis County's favorite bartender? Uh, it's a dream. Yeah. Yeah, he gets stuff done. <laughs> Uh, do you have any uh, word on when the hub might be reopening in downtown Centralia? I have have no you heard idea. any? No, I'm, I'm focusing on one thing. I'm like, hey, <laughs> Can you is find this date available in April? Is this date available in May? <laughs> and uh, he's everywhere. He's so busy that it's like I only get a few minutes of his uh, attention before I'm just like, all right, I'll leave you alone. All right. Awesome. Seriously though, do you tell jokes? Like, can you? Like, what's your? You just <laughs> interested in comedy, but like, do you do it? Do I do it? Yeah. No. Yeah. no? no. Never. Never. You never wanted to try. People have told me they're like, I've seen you get up there. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe don't remember. Uh yeah, there's a desire to do it. I plan on starting to host our, my own shows there at the theater. Yeah. Sweet. Rather than paying people to come down and do ten minutes. I the hard part is is I almost hand invite every single person. You know, I you know, like you said, I'm the Shahalis guy. So it's You're like I already around. know ninety percent of the audience out there. So we were yeah, talking a, about that. That's the problem. We always want to do a story on you, and every time we approach you or you approach us, you've either sold out or you sold out the next day, and there's just really no reason for a problem. Right, right. We just want to tell people how successful you've been. Oh, so like well, a here we go. Feature. Here we go. So yeah. We're going to get that done. Uh, before we want to, we, we before we move on to news, uh, I've just always found like your your downtown existence very interesting to me. 
Like you'll just come into the pub with like like some soup you got from a store that you traded like mushrooms for or something. It's like you've got your own like, chantro bar- mushrooms. Yeah, chantro you, mushrooms. You've got, <laughs> <laughs> like you've got your own downtown bartering system going on. It's yeah, sweet. people. Always, yeah, yeah. Care to comment? No. All right, great. <laughs> uh, let's get some news items in. Up first, opening of Tenino area sex offender housing facility delayed. Gabe, this is really why we had you on. I'm just kidding. Some Tenino area residents gathered outside the new sex offender housing facility near Tenino Wednesday morning to protest the arrival of their first resident, but that resident never showed up. The plan to move them from McNeil Island has been postponed. Uh, One resident suggested on Facebook they should join hands and create a human wall to keep the resident out, but I'm not so sure daring a convicted sex offender to force their way through a wall of human flesh was the deterrent (laughs) they were intending. Uh, Schwartz, has a new release date been announced yet? No, no. They The county pretty much just like threw the procedural book at them. It's like, uh, you know, this area is not zoned for that. That septic can't take that many poos, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, and then as for the human chain, uh, Emily Fitzgerald, the reporter that's covered this, noted that at the forum she was at, Sheriff Derek Sanders' uh, response when that was suggested was like a deep sigh and a, please don't do that. You know, that's Sanders. He's... He's doing okay out there. We sent Jared up there to take pictures, though, just in case a human chain, like, organically formed, you know? Yeah, as they do. (laughs) As they do. Uh, And they were just, like, (laughs) protesting. They had signs, and they were in opposition to it. The real news we didn't get, unfortunately, was uh, yesterday or the day before, there was a huge crowd up there to, I think, dedicate or have a grand opening for the new Maytown play area that they have built there within view of the sex offender housing facility. Mm Mm-hmm. So, okay, there's that. All right. Uh, next item. Centralia man accused of starving horses turns himself in and is released on unsecured bail. This is Isaac Knee. He was released on $10,000 bail Friday. His summons had been sent to the wrong address. He allegedly starved two horses, Sparky and Peanut, last summer. Court records include a veterinarian's testimony that the horses underwent, quote, substantial pain and suffering over a long period of time. The veterinarian wrote suffering was unjustifiable. Uh, You guys have any good jokes for those hungry horses? I don't have any jokes. Uh, Isabel, who is not with us this week, which you did not note, but she's off. Um, She wrote this up, uh, the original story, not this follow-up. And she had to not dumb it down, but uh, really take some of the details out because it was pretty disgusting as far yeah. as the condition. Oh, of that the makes sense. Why horses. you have the horses' names in there? Then yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to humanize like we gotta, them a bit. We're a little lacking in this. <laughs> uh, and then also, just a note: the I felt almost bad. I didn't feel bad for him, but I felt almost bad for him because the Olympian picked up our story about the warrant being out, the one before this one, him turning himself in, and they ran it like three times on Facebook over the weekend about how there's a warrant out for his arrest, and I'm sure he didn't really enjoy that. Yeah, probably not. (laughs) Because they did not see the follow-up story. Uh, He was as not starved for attention as his horses were starved. Yeah. The messed up thing about this one is he had the material to feed the horses. He just didn't. Like, the deputy yeah. noted that there was feed on the grounds, and he just didn't feed them. Like, so it, was like, it seems like a, a laziness issue and a hatred of horses. Yeah, could be. I Both don't know. Who peanut knows? and Sparky. Who knows what goes through your mind when you're not feeding your horses? I'd... This county doesn't even have a horse court. No. <laughs> just a <laughs> dog court. Just a dog court. <laughs> Uh, next item, police standoff in Centralia ends in arrest for domestic violence suspect. This was early Thursday morning in the Logan district. A guy barricaded himself in his house, which they, that just means he didn't answer the door, right? No, I think in this case, like the original report was that he, uh, assaulted a woman with a gun, like in the face. The woman later said that he hit her with his fist, mm-hmm. which I don't know that one is better than the other, I guess would hurt less if it was a fist. Um, but then he just wouldn't come out. So, I mean, that's pretty much barricading yourself in there. We did or the just, old chair under the doorknob trick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. cops without a warrant, and maybe they did have one, but I don't think they're going to go barging into a house where a guy had a gun and, like, on his terms. Yeah. This wouldn't make any sense. Um, anyway, as of late Thursday morning, crews were executing a search warrant on the residence to find the firearm he was accused of illegal having. At the scene, Centralia police had 
a State Patrol militarized SWAT vehicle and several armored officers around the house in view of the suspect, which Chief Stacy Denham described as scare tactics, if you will, while offering protection for crews. They also had an incident control board they were updating. And between 20 and 25 officers present, including a negotiator. They also had tech employees from the department who came to set up a brand new printer, allowing the department to print off a search warrant, photos of the suspect, and more right out of their vehicles. I don't want to sound like a socialist or anything here, but 25 people to get one guy in a house who might have a gun? I know you don't like cops, Aaron. I I mean, it's just like... (laughs) They should have just let the alleged domestic abuser with a gun go, and then maybe they'd catch him later, right? And he wouldn't do anything in the meantime, surely. Not even that. Like, how many doors can this guy have on his house? (laughs) It's like a dozen cops per door. I am just, like, really looking forward to the day that you need the cops. I hope that nothing, like, bad happens to you, but I'm never going to let you forget it. Like, when you call the cops with your little bonnet on and your nighty, and you're just like, I heard a noise outside, and three cops show up, and you're going to be like, well, why wasn't it just one of you? It's just there's only one noise. I mean, this is it, this did take place in the Logan District where there's a gun behind every door and two in every alley. That's like, true. You could have just waited that's for his true, Uber true. Eats order to show up and, like, no, I I, I, don't tr- know. I trust friend of the pod, uh, police chief Stacy Denham uh, made the right call here. Um, I mean, Maybe unfortunately, a opportunity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, for me, and I, this is just me not being a cop, but I always do wonder, like, if you're trying to deescalate a situation, um, and I don't have the training, so I, what do I know? But you pull up in like a bunch of tanks, that's not going to help a whole lot. I wouldn't think, but it's got to be a reason they do it. No. Um, and yeah, I don't mean to be critical of Dedham. I like Dedham. But I just, like, it's a lot of people. Like, what if there was a crime on the other side of town? Next item, City of Toledo cuts ties with Brandon Svensson after background check comes under scrutiny. This is just everyone involved trying to dance around the fact that giving Brandon Svensson a badge and wooden gun or whatever reserve officers get is probably a little risky. Um, I'm not going to step on your bits, but yeah, that's not the point of the story. Uh, I mean, that, Okay. You disagree. I'm not going to step on your bits. Go on. You got a lot of bits here. I anyway, I the to deprive you of them. police chief in Toledo, Sam Patrick, said Svensson had passed the background check required to be a reserve police officer. And the Morton police chief said he'd passed a background check. Was that correct? Mm-hmm. Um, and then local activist Kyle Wheeler told the mayor of Toledo that maybe he should double check that. And the mayor did. And he said, quote, Mr. Svensson's background was never completed by the city of Toledo because he was eliminated as a candidate during the criminal background portion of the process. Uh, Svensson responded to this by saying, at no point in this process did anyone from the city of Toledo ever inform me, or to my knowledge, anyone else, that there was an issue with my background. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think? I mean, it's more of like a procedural <laughs> thing in this case. Like the, I mean, if you want to find wrongdoing, just my opinion, it sounds like, the interim police chief or the very short time police chief, Sam Patrick just didn't do the background check. And when we talked to, when Emily Fitzgerald talked to the Toledo mayor, it wasn't that he knew the background check wasn't done. It was that he talked with a consultant and was like, you need to protect the city here. So you need to produce this letter that basically says, you know, Brandon Svensson doesn't have anything to do with our department. Yeah. Um, So I think that's more what it, what it was. Kyle Wheeler was the person that, Brought it up though, yeah. So yeah. The deal was that he didn't have a background check, or they there's something on there that it seemed like Toledo didn't know. Um, and then we're waiting on the Criminal Justice Training Commission to finish an investigation that may or may not be happening because they can't say if there's an investigation <laughs> happening. This is how cloaked in secrecy. It's a very convoluted story, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, but but yeah, I, I wanted to note Wheeler also had a letter to the editor that ran in the same edition as that that noted. Brandon had a speeding ticket of about 80, 80 to 83 miles per hour, something like that, and a 60 on Highway 12, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and he thought that was pretty damning. I've seen some other folks that thought it was as well. Um, but um, I, we, we just don't know. We'll follow up. We'll stick with it. But yeah, he's don't... not a cop anywhere now. He's not in Morton either, which I found to be interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's interesting that somebody could, quote, pass two background checks and be welcomed in as a reserve cop and then lose his status because... Somebody from the public called up a mayor and said, hey, are you sure they passed? And yeah. they're like, no. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're, <laughs> oh, shoot. You're 100% right. That's, I mean, that's why there's a story on it. It's, it's newsworthy, and it's something people are interested in. And Brandon is many things. He's the chair of the Republican Party, the mayor of Winlock. He's definitely in the public eye. So I think any scrutiny is warranted. Yeah. Ah, you guys ready for this section? 
uh, the Chehalis Basin Film Festival is yes. coming soon. Oh, Gabe, you, big film guy? You hit the notes. I can see yeah, it now. Big Get out film of there. <laughs> so this film. festival is in two parts, February 25th in Hoquiam and on March 3rd at Centralia College. I have obtained a secret list of films playing at the Chehalis Basin Film Festival. Would you like to hear them? Yes. Yeah, I would. With the preface that... It's, it's not true, I'm sure. James Cameron's Damatar 2, The Way of Water, <laughs> will be screening. Yes. As well as classic film Some Dyke It Hot. Batman, The Dark Tide Rises, a favorite of ours. Damalon, Harry Potter and the Half-Flood Prince. <laughs> Flood Diamond, good Leo movie there. Uh, classic 80s comedy Levy Waits. Oh, that's a good one. Can't Hardly Wait for the Water to Recede. <laughs> Sin City, A Damn to Kill For. Dr. Strange Flood or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Dam. Don't Worry Drowning. <laughs> Ten Things I Hate About the Chehalis Basin Flood Authority. Lord of the River, The Flood Ship of the Legs. I think that one's directed <laughs> at you. That one shorts. hits too close to home, man. It's not a joke. It's a wet, 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 wet world. Cat on a dry tin roof. A river runs through my house. <laughs> Kevin Costner classic Waterworld, and one more, There Will Be Flood. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's uh, absolutely not what's playing at the film festival, but uh, uh, it'd changes. be a lot cooler if it was. I, will, I would give you that. Yeah. Uh, should we say the actual film festival is, let's see, February 25th from 3 to 5 at the 7th Street Theater in Hoquiam. Aaron, that's your old stomping grounds. I know you hold it near and dear. You know I love Hoquiam. Gabe, uh, big Hoquiam guy. <laughs> Never been there. Uh, then the following the week. Oh, sorry. The following week on March 3rd, we'll be here in town, 6.30 to 8.30, the Transalta Commons uh, over at Centralia College. All right. Go check out some flood. Fi- what? Are they like documentaries? What's? Uh, I'm glad you asked because they're going to be showing feature films highlighting the Chehalis <laughs> River Basin's vibrant wildlife, salmon recovery efforts, fish and wildlife conservation projects, habitat restoration projects, and the value of collaboration within the basin. It's going to melt some faces off. All right. Going to be great. Yeah. Uh, and then our last news item, unless you've got anything to add, a woman accused of practicing law in Lewis County without a license faces felonies. Uh, quote from the Lewis County Prosecutor's, o- Prosecutor's Office, Miss Duke is not an attorney licensed in the state of Washington. Perhaps their most concise and effective affidavit to date. Yeah, she uh, obviously disputes it. We've had many emails on the topic that all sound like they're coming from the same person, and I'm not going <laughs> to say that it's her, but that is the suspicion in the newsroom and these people, quotes, they're very sh- like certain that you don't have to be an attorney to practice law. It, anybody can do it. Well, lawyers disagree. John, John Meyer <laughs> certainly uh, what, what did she say? She's an attorney attorney of, of fact? Yeah, attorney yeah. of fact. You got it. Her client, uh, or not client, <laughs> was the guy that was allegedly trying to extort like hundreds and thousands of dollars out of a Centralia police officer. So it gets weird the more you go with it. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that charge before. That's the first for me. Um, and... Miss Duke thought she could pass herself off as a lawyer to this guy and also the courts? Uh, I think kind just of. the courts. I don't know. It seemed like she was trying to do him a solid. Like, you know, hey, I'll, uh. I'll come on. I'll show up for you. I want I, some law and order. I can do this. Yeah, I agree that she she could be in the wrong here. But also, like, you shouldn't have to be an attorney to practice law. Like, they, anybody should be able to do it. Right. It's up to the guy to make the, that decision. Yeah. But, if you, like, aren't a lawyer and go in and screw up your case, like, that's on you. Right. You can defend yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... It reminds me of, uh, you know, Bo Rupert? You remember Bo Rupert by any chance? No. The name? Well, if you, if you know the name, you know the name. That's, that's all you need to know. Um, but he, he's a, a local guy of, I don't know, what would you say? Like a notorious. He's like the, the perfect use of the word notorious. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's banned from things. the state of Kansas. The ACLU is trying to help him out with that. <laughs> that's a true fact. Anyways, he had some local charges, and he wanted to represent himself in, like, because of like the news trail Bo Rupert has left over the years, we were like, that's going to be hilarious and like it's going to be funny. I kind of thought it'd be a train wreck, and so we covered it, and he was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the room was just kind of stunned because he actually kind of knew what he was doing. He enough. made some points. He made some points. He was like objecting and like like sustained. Like he, he did very well. <laughs> the like the small town local paper, wherever it was in Kansas, covered it and did like a really funny write up discussing like his shoes and his attire and his mannerisms in court. It was good. He was banned from the state, which 
I think he might not be banned anymore, but I don't know. I, like, if you're banned from Kansas, like, oh no. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to go to Oklahoma. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Jacek from Summit Funding. Here's what a recent client is saying about us. Hi, this is Chad Taylor. Have you been thinking about purchasing or refinancing your current home? The team at Summit Funding is the best in class. Looking for a conventional FHA, VA, USDA, jumbo, or even a reverse mortgage? Trust the team at Summit Funding. Corley and I did, and we couldn't be happier. Thank you to all of our past clients. If you have any questions, give us a call at 360-330-4037. All right, we're back, and it's time for our segments segment. First up is Tales from the Takes page, a.k.a. the opinion section. I have not had the pleasure of reading the opinion section yet. It is a pleasure. Do you have any good any good takes? I'm just going to wade into this like there wasn't a lover's quarrel during the break. It got really, <laughs> Gabe, did it get tense? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes your two dads don't agree about the content of this podcast. It's true. Uh, let's see. We'll just do, <laughs> we'll just do a rundown. Uh, Julie McDonald has a sweet column in tomorrow's paper, uh, AAUW, which we talked about last week, the American Association of University Women. She mm-hmm. writes about Priscilla Tiller, uh, and that's all very interesting, but she really got into the use of blimps over the Oregon coast following the attack by the Japanese back in the 1940s. Did you guys know about that attack? Uh, I I thought it was the Chinese, and it was Wait, last this, week. Yeah, is this the balloon thing? <laughs> this is different. This is different. COVID Very topical, balloon? though. Very <laughs> topical. These were our blimps, and we were using them to make sure there was no submarines like off a of seaside. Mm-hmm. Um, I vacationed down at Fort Stevens uh, last spring, and I was like shocked to learn that the Japanese attacked Oregon. Like I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? No, no. idea. Yeah. Sick brag about your vacation, though. <laughs> it was like revenge for the Doolittle raid in 1942. No, I'm just saying, this is wild. I had no clue until I was there. Uh, and the only injury was like one guy at Fort Stevens like hit his head while he was rushing to take cover. <laughs> and like, then there's like a monument there that's like a peace monument for this like skirmish that unfolded. I just, I don't know why. I think there should be like a reenactment of it. Like, guy sprained, his, year. sprained his neck looking at the balloon. But yeah, so it includes a photo of this. Uh, look at this. You've been to Seaside. Like, it's got this blimp over Seaside looking for Japanese oh, yeah, submarines. That's, that's a very, that's, yeah. You could, you could shoot that one down. No one talks about it enough. We're always talking about Gettysburg, never talking about Fort Stevens. What's up with that? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. it was a very solid column. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We've got some letters. Emphasis on wind for energy is strange. Massive new airport in area would destroy a rural way of life. We've got some more gun letters. Uh, Brian Mitke gets backhanded by a letter writer about his column about recess in the legislature. So, uh, yeah, this that's an interesting uh, letter about recess in schools. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty straight to the point. Uh, and then we've got John Braun's weekly legislative column, which is titled "The Homes People Need Can Be Built Sooner If the Government Would Just Get Out of the Way." Get out yeah. of our way, Aaron, and let us build houses. Uh, I personally am forming a hand-in-hand chain in front of uh, wide open fields, being like, no houses here, <laughs> not in my backyard. You know what an important part of building houses is? Oh, Go on. Uh, what, Roofs. God damn it. You do need a good roof. It's very, very true. And if Stony B is to be believed, oh, uh, the latest review at theroofdoctor.com, that's doctor spelled out, not the abbreviated Dr. Dr. Uh, Stony B gave him five stars and he said they gave me a good estimate. And just by the way, those estimates are all free. They don't cost you a cent. They will come out, they will look at your roof and they will tell you what you need and how much it costs. That price will be the cheapest price. I know I've left the review now. I'm going to go back to it. Then I followed through with it, left clean work site and friendly and helpful. And I really recommend them if you're wanting a new roof or just some roof repairs. I'll be damned. How can you contact the roof doctor? Uh, well, Ken S. would probably know how to contact because he says, amazing company. I loved their professional and careful cleanup. Plus, they j- did the job in one day. I would definitely use them again uh, if you were to contact the Roof Doctor, which is a family-owned roofing company since 1959. Uh, you would call 360-352-1294. I do believe they have some other numbers you could call as Your local well. number, 736-0246, I believe. I hope you're not wrong on that. 
send it's people to the, the wrong one. It's on the big sign uh, just south of Chehalis. And make sure that you are at theroofdoctor.com, T-H-E-R-O-O-F-D-O-C-T-O-R. It's a very popular uh, name for roofing companies, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned. And this is the only real one, though. It was, it was born in 1959, which, as we all know, was the first year that roofs were invented. Uh, Been there since the beginning. Wow. Uh, they're great. Great sponsor. Happy to have them. Um, Can we mention Gabe's Gabe's other job? Do you do real estate photography? Do we have to do that now that we've already talked about the roof talk? Yeah, we got the bid in. I figured that's another one of your hustles, right? What's What's the greatest house you've ever taken a picture of? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just like architecture. All right. If you need uh, photos of your house, Gabe is Fine. around. Yeah, we, we can just cut that whole part <laughs> out. And keep your secrets, Gabe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to be known as a real estate photographer. I just want to, you know, I'm trying to get back into the regular oh, photography. No, I, have, I have a photography, photography business. <laughs> this podcast. More into portraits and stuff yeah. like that. But uh, yeah. Well, you can get a portrait cut of all your house. Part. We can just cut all this part. Where do we learn about your photography? Do you got to? We don't need that. Nah, we, <laughs> <just, laughs> we just need to keep cutting all right, all that's yeah, it. Yeah. He's trying to hide something here. No, I'm not trying um, to hide anything. I like, I really like the column from Bill Moeller this week. Yeah, o- Old Lewis yeah. County Directory has plenty of stories to tell, which is like he just read a phone book, right? Uh, it was an Old Lewis County Directory, yeah. But actually, it, that's our most popular column of the week was that one. Um, what Bill has been doing, Bill's 95, I believe. Um, and as he's written about his column, he's had a pretty rough year as far as falls and health scares and COVID and all that. Um, but he's been revisiting some of his past columns. For this, I don't know when this one was from. He turned in one today that was from 2013. And it's kind of a hybrid so he's like running his older columns, uh, but including like new insights on ways that he was thinking back then. Mm-hmm. And I think it's been really good. All right. Shall we move on to people's champion of the week? Sure. We Please. have two candidates. First off the WF West girls bowling team, which won a state championship. Pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. I don't think it's the first time they've won it, but you know, they're, they're pretty good. A lot of bowling. Good at it. Gabe, was, it you the bowl? First, was it the first one? I do bowl. About once every year. I actually went bowling a week ago Sunday, and my elbow still has not recovered. Oh, I wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you. What was your, Barely drive over here. What was your score? We don't need to talk about that either. Oh, man, so, so many secrets. <laughs> secreted man. Uh, and our other People's Champion of the Week nominee, the Economic Alliance of Lewis County, had their awards banquet gala. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's their annual banquet, but that is where they give out their awards, and it is somewhat like a gala, so all, is, all of that is true. I was not invited, but mm-hmm. would you like to explain some of the awards that were given out? Uh, yeah, sure. As soon as I like pull it up in front of me. Wasn't there, in addition to the uh, team championship, didn't they also, WF West also have the state champion? Yes. Uh, Piper Chalmers? Piper Chalmers, I believe, was the state champion. And did had she won it before? Because one of them was a first, I specifically remember. It was either the team or... I don't think it was the team. The team won. So it must have been her first state championship. She'd won three district champions, championships before. I can't remember if she'd won a state championship before. Gotcha. We'll discuss it Thursday on Sports Dump. I just want the, all of our listenership to know... Um, no, not gearing this towards anyone, that my pick for People's Champion of the Week was Chronicle owner and CEO Coralie Taylor. Aaron mm-hmm. poo-pooed it, said we need to I share it with not. all the award winners. <laughs> and I was so like, but she is the People's Champion of the Week. And that was what our spat was about during the break, was mm-hmm. he refused to just like let her be the People's Champion of the Week. Uh, also honored the Russ Money Award, went to Bob Russell for his uh, work with Salmon on his property. Corley Taylor, uh, she won, well, I can't remember the exact name of her award. It was like a community um Gosh, champion, champion of the week. Yeah. Community, <laughs> it was community champion of the week. Community commitment award. Uh, Centralia city manager, Rob Hill got the staff award from EDC, which I imagine is what it sounds like. Um, and then Paul Erickson at the port of Shales got the, uh, Gail and Carolyn Shaw award. Nice. All right. Lots of awards. The rest money one is one that we pick, um, at the Chronicle each year, uh, in collaboration with the, Economic Alliance, which I keep calling the EDC. Um, and that's the EDC, named though. after probably the greatest writer that's ever written at the Chronicle, in my opinion. Definitely far better than you, Aaron. Well, it doesn't take a lot. Are no, I mean, like, again? you're way down there. Just way like, down the list? Yeah, it's pretty far down. I don't want to insult anyone, but you mm-hmm. know some of the names I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. Right, well, been some hacks moving through yeah, this place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some, some real terrible writers, and then me, <laughs> below them, yeah. 
no, you're a bit further down. Remember the time you printed Lewis County on the front page? It I was wasn't L O U I. That wasn't me. I was a reporter at the time with no editing responsibilities. But to be clear, you would be like <laughs> midfield with when we started including letter to the editor writers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank like, you. You're wow. definitely it's below really, like Marty just, Ansley. Uh, Whoa. Well, <laughs> definitely. I mean, come on. His what stuff. about Art Reynolds? Oh, Art Reynolds. The great Art Reynolds. He, you're definitely below him. Prolific letter writer. <laughs> the greatest. Anyway. Uh, Sirens Banger of the Week is next. <laughs> this this was my morning giggle. Uh, we just we got to drop in one of these for this headline. It's so hot right now. <laughs> uh, police arrest man they say left dead fish at Astoria's Goody's house, comma stole yacht and prompted harrowing Coast Guard rescue. So this guy was in Astoria. He snuck up to the Goonies house, a house from the film The Goonies, and he put stickers on the video cameras around it. And then he left some dead fish on the porch and shouted, hey, you guys, and put it on his Facebook page. Uh, Gabe, what do you think of this story so far? Well, I love, I love the way that he, uh, you know, covered his tracks by walking up to the camera <laughs> and then covering them up like it removes the memory of the camera. He's, he's never seen a camera and It's before. a 35-year-old man, too. This sounds like something I would do when I was in my teen years. <laughs> Uh, and then, a couple days later, apparently, he stole a boat and motored to the end of the Columbia River, <laughs> where it meets the ocean, and called for help. And the Coast Guard sent out a chopper to get him, and the boat capsized, but the diver still pulled him in. There's video of this out there. It is nuts. So the Coast Guard took him to a hospital, where he gave them a fake name, and then he ran away and went to a shelter in Seaside, where the police finally caught up to him. There are also five warrants out for him in his home of Victoria, British Columbia for harassment and mischief. Oh, wow. So this guy's been doing this for a while. Yeah. And the Goonies house is just on his bucket list. He's <laughs> and once he got that dead fish on there, he's like, you know what? This isn't as fulfilling as I thought it would be. I'm going to go steal a boat. <laughs> also, how do you steal a boat? Who leaves the keys in like a $160,000 yacht? Ah. It was a Hyundai. <laughs> or I guess yeah. you could just like float away or something like that. He but. just cut the lines. He's like, away he's we like go. Hey, here we go. And then he got to the edge of the river and he's like, oh shit. Yeah. It's I like, read on there it was like, it's called like the, the graveyard or something, right? The part where they picked him up or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's like known for being like, right. One of those <laughs> dangerous right. It's one I, that's where one I will he shit is at, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> this guy didn't even Google how cameras work, so he wasn't right. going to Google like how rivers right. work. This guy's an international criminal. <laughs> Not even the camera, like the cameras too, but he put it on his own Facebook page. <laughs> right, like so why I, are you covering it up? <laughs> it's got I don't your get name the dead fish reference it. either. Is that a thing? Not in the Is Goonies. that like what you do? You go to the Goonies house, you throw a fish on there and say a quote? And no. I, I don't know. I don't I, get I don't, it. I don't like, think so. <laughs> this guy needs help. Uh, well, he's probably going to get it in jail or Canada. Also, imagine getting picked up by the Coast Guard after you're just like, <laughs> oh, God, embarrassing. <laughs> when he's in the, in the water. You're in so much trouble, and you're just like, <laughs> like help, uh, help me. <laughs> gotta give him a fake name. <laughs> yeah. He almost got away with it, because he, he gave a fake name, and they didn't realize it until later. I kind of wish he would have got away. Like yeah. The Barefoot like, Bandit. Remember like, that guy? Like the lamer Barefoot Bandit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D.B. Cooper. Uh, yeah, we're D.B. Cooper. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, that guy. Is that a sponsor, too? D.B. Cooper. Work. <laughs> yeah. <It's> a, <laughs> not the <first. laughs> uh, The other one we have is Thurston County Pursuit Ends with Fight with Suspects in Cow Dung. Alternate headline, Cops Corner and Combat Criminal in Cow Crap Corral. That's a lot better than what I came up with. Uh, well, you know. People say I was actually the best editor in Chronicle history, and you were <laughs> the weakest, as one commenter oh reminded God, us. Way yes. down the list, weaker than, you know, I, I, I can't even remember any editors beyond it, Michael and Mickey. It's, it's true. It's true. Far stronger than you. <laughs> I'm not going to dispute it. It was said. <laughs> uh, anyway, when was this? This was over the weekend? Uh, this was last night. Go on. Uh a pursuit in Thurston County ended in a fight between deputies and the suspect in a pile of cow dung. The Thurston County Sheriff's Office reported there was an auto theft in progress on Waddell Creek Southwest. Uh, the reporting party said someone was trying to 
with a utility truck trying to steal a vehicle, um, which resulted the suspect ramming the calling party's vehicle before running them over. Um, and then there was a pursuit of some sort. It was a slow speed, 20 minute pursuit. Uh, suspect drove through a backyard and that according to the sheriff's office is when quote things, that's where things got messy. Deputies pursued the suspect on foot across the field over barbed wire fences and tasered the suspect. The suspect then fought with deputies in a thick brown puddle. <laughs> we have confirmed this puddle was cow manure. dung. I <laughs> Sounds like a back the to the future. <laughs> Marty. Yeah, Biff the Tannen was Biff Tannen. <laughs> <laughs> the victim was treated and released, and our deputies are working on switching out their boots, and the sheriff's office knew exactly what they were doing here. Usually when the Olympia area uh, police respond to people flinging shit at each other, it's taking place at the Capitol, am I right? Uh, hey uh, hey. Got him. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you got to drag Jim Walsh into every episode. I <laughs> you guys want to do Facebook comments of the week? I never do, but you always do it anyway. I can't wait. Uh, on the police standoff in the Logan District, this commenter said, I tell you now, the end times are here. Repent and give your life to Jesus. Things will gradually get worse. Don't believe me. Do your own research. To which someone replied, sorry, I don't believe in all that horse shit. Uh, another commenter said, I remember a similar situation near Mary's Corner 30 years ago over a working septic system that did not have an engineer stamp. Now homeless can use the creeks and rivers. Somebody replied to that and said, pro tip, you can shit in a creek too. It's not just the homeless that are living the high life. (laughs) On an episode of News Dump from a few weeks ago, somebody commented, not listening to skewed news. I still remember the setup at Spiffy's where they staged a crazy driver trying to hurt people and then lied about it. Chronicle is no longer reputable. We have a long memory down here in the sticks. I mean, Spiffy's is on I-5. Yeah, well, is uh, that is <laughs> that, that, that can't works. actually be one person's like opinion on events of a live video of a car racing through and everybody pulling out guns and chasing after it. Uh, you set it up personally, yeah, if I remember staged. right. Yeah, we do keep our prop guns on the second floor here at the Chronicle. They've been there ever since the Centralia massacre. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, on the woman in trouble for saying she was an attorney when she was not, according to the courts, this commenter says at least she was just practicing, not doing it for real. Got him. Get him. Pretty good. Uh, on the guy that starved his horses, and this commenter said, I feel like I've seen this guy somewhere. Do you guys remember him? To which somebody replied, yeah, he was the purple friend of Ronald McDonald. Oh, grimace, Joe. So, <laughs> grimace burn. Somebody else says, looks like he could live off his own fat reserve for a while. Oh, come on. Somebody replies, sad to see comments such as this one. I constantly remind kids not to bully others based on their appearance to judge by character. And so on and so forth. And then the same commenter from before responds, stick to the kids, bud. This is me judging by character. He starved horses. Now he can starve after he runs out of fat reserve. <laughs> for what it's worth, the commenter is not going to be mistaken for a scarecrow anytime soon. Well, that was mean. Um, and then another commenter, we need feed banks for livestock. This county was founded on agriculture. To which I say, you want the government to give animal owners a handout. Sounds to me like socialism. A true bootstraps capitalist would let those animals die of hunger. Thoughts. We feed those elk. Like, is it the Oak Creek wild, Wildlife Area over on the other side of White Pass? Yeah, sounds like socialism, too. Yeah, it's socialism for elk. Mm-hmm. Those elk just want handouts. They travel there every year now. Uh, and a story on a Longview woman assaulted by someone she met online. This commenter says, Longview slash Kelso, wouldn't you think the local Cowlitz County News would cover this? I'm sorry, but this is not local news. Lewis County is the largest county in Washington and the most forgotten about it seems. Hello, we are here. What in the world? What a blissful existence to have never in your life seen a map. <laughs> that's it. That, that's the comments. No, I thought that story was like a good, like, uh, like any woman could probably benefit from reading it you know like she met a guy online and he was a psychopath and Mm -hmm. punched her in the face because he she called him out for lying yeah that was a fair story i was so confused by that comment i I, looked up if lewis county was the largest county in washington i didn't think it was and it is not what is the largest it's the longest yeah (laughs) definitely the longest (laughs) uh okanagan is the largest well and it is definitely not the most populous no no, so I, it's just the largest county they've been in, maybe? I don't... Even then, that seems suspect. Uh, what's in the next edition? 
What's in tomorrow's paper? Uh, let's see here. I've already forgotten. We just got off a deadline. Uh, oh, the state, who which I know you've been known to hop into bed with from time to time, is uh-huh. wanting relationship. to require licenses for smelt dipping. Apparently, we can't even smelt dip anymore without Johnny Law having his finger. What smelt dip? Uh, once it well, it used to be tasty. a huge. Like, <laughs> it is tasty. It is tasty. <laughs> the, new, the new Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, smelt dipping is it's like a run of fish they're like probably like, like that long and nobody can see but like you can think like four to six inches something like that sure uh, that come like once a year now it used to be like a really healthy huge run but now there's like one day out of the year if you're lucky where um, you can go down there and fish they do it at Castle Rock and you just dip your net in and try to get as many as you can um, there is a limit which is detailed in the stories that we have um, but yeah Aaron doesn't think anybody should have the right to do that anymore. Do you want to, do you want to hold your fingers up showing four to six inches? Uh, I, I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. Yeah. I like, what, a, what a blissful existence to have never seen a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> longest county in Washington. <laughs> uh, we also have What's Lewis up? County chapter of Washington Realtors, who I imagine it is near and dear to Gabe's heart, uh, donated $14,600 to the Lewis County Food Bank Coalition. We've got a story on a Rochester animal rescue that uh, was at PetSense over the weekend and is trying to find homes for dogs and cats that have been saved from pretty squalid conditions. And look at this dog. Just look at this guy. Look at those eyes. You That's get, a sad looking little you puppy. You get like lost in those eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really good story. That was another Emily Fitzgerald. Um, and there's lots of other stuff in there, too. Plenty of good stuff in there. All right, uh, before we wrap up, Gabe, do you want to plug the comedy show one more time? Yeah, it's uh, this Friday, February 10th at the Chehalis... Excuse me, let me rephrase that. McFiler's Chehalis Theater. Contractually right. obligated to say McFiler's first, Chehalis Theater. Good. Uh, <clears throat> start Doors at 7.30, show starts at 8.30. Uh, tickets at hubcomedy.com. We got a bunch of other great shows coming up in the next couple of months. Hopefully there'll be something in the paper here soon <laughs> detailing <laughs> who's coming and when. I gotta work uh, that out here. Is this show do they have like food and drinks? What could you they definitely have uh drinks. Uh, I'm not sure what they're gonna do for food. I don't think they're gonna have like their fine dining menu menu available. I don't want people cutting into steaks and whatnot mid Mid show and mm-hmm. disrupt and stuff that way, but yeah. <laughs> Again, can you get to the bottom of the hub in downtown Centralia and when certain people will be I'll able dig to into turn yeah. there? Because I know people that are really wondering when that's going to open back up. I miss the hub. I forgot all about it. <sighs> wow, because you're a Shahales guy. Somebody's right. never got drunk for six dollars before. Centralia downtown guys are far grittier than Shahales downtown guys. Just right. want you to know that. Yeah, it's true. Just a fact. Um. <laughs> In closing, we're sponsored by Summit Funding and the Roof Doctor. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcast if you like. It makes no difference to me, but Eric Schwartz will take it to oh, heart as all the comments concerning him are on Facebook and calling him filthy names. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, create a, a new Facebook profile, leave some spicy comments. Hell yeah. Can't wait to read them. Yeah. Let's spice that up a little bit. All right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>